Hey everybody, it's James Quick from Learn, Build, Teach, and welcome back for another video. In this one, we're gonna take a look at debugging Angular CLI applications in Visual Studio Code, so let's go ahead and dive on in. So if you guys have followed my channel for a while, you probably have seen that I've done a lot of, uh, a lot of videos on Visual Studio Code. It's, one, it's my favorite editor out there. Uh, and I just love it, and I think you could probably tell from the videos that I've put out. So I've been working on a Learn VS Code course, which is gonna teach you all the things that you need to know when using uh, Visual Studio Code, how to take advantage of awesome features like debugging that we'll talk about here, uh, customization, extensions, themes, uh, all the different things that you can do inside of VS Code. Uh, so if you guys are interested, head on over to learnvscode.com. You can sign up for the newsletter to get 50% off the course when it's released in the next month or so, and then updates for it along the way. So if you're interested in anything uh, VS Code, you're gonna wanna check this out. Uh, so just keep that in mind. Now, to get started, I first wanna talk just a little bit about what the Angular CLI is. Uh, so Angular is now up to version uh, six, is the, the most recent major version. And along with Angular, uh, alongside of Angular kind of ships this Angular CLI thing, which if you're familiar with Create React App or Vue CLI, they're all pretty much the same kind of thing, but it's it's kind of a, a scaffolding tool to quickly uh, set up an Angular application, to set up a dev server, to set up uh, build systems, all the different things that you would typically do with a front end application is really just packaged in this Angular CLI. So if you don't already have uh, the CLI installed, you'll need to to install, uh, so install globally via npm, so npm install dash g, and then at angular slash cli. To generate a new project, uh, go to uh, wherever you wanna generate the project, and then run the command uh, ng new, and then the name of your project, and then uh, change directories into that project, and then serve is how you actually get started with that project. So I wanna show you what I've got uh, here, and this is exactly what I did. I created a, a starter uh, Angular application with the Angular CLI. And when you create this new Angular project via the CLI, you'll get something, you'll get basically a starter application that you can run uh, with the ng-serve command. So to run it, you would just run the ng-serve like that. And I wanna walk you through, so I've changed just a few files in here uh, to be a little more specific to uh, what I wanted to do. So let me just, I'm gonna start this up and let it run here. And this will take a couple seconds, so I'll let it run and then come back. All right, so it looks like it's up and running and you can see it gives you a little message here. Uh, you can look at localhost 4200 to open the application. And I'm going to do just that, go on to localhost 4200. And basically what I've got is just a simple uh, login application and I'm gonna open up the uh, inspect tools here because I'm gonna print out a command. Um, and I should see if I come to the console and I click login, I'm just gonna see a message here that says logging in. So let me show you just a little bit about what I have. So I just took the base app component files and uh, tweaked them up a little bit. So inside of the app component HTML, I've got basically my um, a login container and inside of that as a login form. And I use the login container to do a flex box and just center this login form. And then I've got some styles in my CSS to style the buttons and inputs and, form and, and forms and stuff. And I could have used uh, could have used Bootstrap or something like that to be pretty quick, but I decided to just give some styles myself. So this is what I have. This is the application. If I come into the app component, which is the logic behind this component, uh, notice I've got a login uh, function that gets called and then it triggers uh, the log of logging in. So that's what we just saw on the console. Now, what we really wanna do is be able to see what it's like to, to debug an Angular CLI application in VS Code. So to debug, you can come over to this, uh, this debug button icon over here on the left. All right, so if we look at uh, this debug panel, oops, let's get this open a little bit further. I see that it says no configurations, and the way Visual Studio Code uh, works with debugging is you'll actually create a, a .VS Code folder in your uh, in your project and inside of that folder you're cr you'll create a launch uh, configuration file which is where uh, where visual studio code reads your debug configurations from so if you don't have a configuration you can come to the settings and you can select an environment and what we're going to do is select chrome and then it generates this uh, this basic uh, debug configuration for you 
launch Chrome against local host and it's gonna run against 8080. We actually want this to run against 4200 because that's where our application is running. And then the web root, this just says what's the root of our uh, web application folder. And it's a Chrome and it's a launch. So this is, this is really all we need here in this uh, configuration. If I save this and come back over to my file explorer, notice it added this .vs code folder and then it added the launch.json uh, file as well. That's the file that we were just in. So when we come back to debug, we'll see a dropdown for all the different configurations that are being loaded from the launch.json here. Cool, so I am going to, uh, since we've got this selected, I'm gonna go ahead and start this. And this will pop open a new browser window for us. And it's over here on the wrong monitor. I'm gonna drag this over here. So here's our application in debug mode. If I uh, come in here to the console again and do a login, I'll see my logging in message. Now what I want to do, and this will probably be a fairly, uh, fairly reasonable point to uh, have a breakpoint is uh, I can check here, I can set my breakpoint for login and then when this login function is triggered, it's actually gonna break and it'll take me out of uh, Chrome and bring me over to Visual Studio Code. So let's click this one more time and we should be taken over to VS Code. Now inside of VS Code and the debugging console or uh, panel over here, see our call stack, see the things that have been called. We've got our breakpoints here. Notice I've only got one breakpoint and it's enabled so it's checked. Uh, watch, if you wanna watch for specific variables, you can do that. And then inside of the variable section, if you dig a little deeper, let me close this watch here. If I look inside of uh, my component, notice that it, it tells me what the password and username are. These are the two properties here that are on this component. So if I, so if I continue this, notice these are both blank, if I continue this, and come back over to my application and type in something like James and James and do it again. Notice that the password or username for the app component are being, uh, are being updated here. Now one of the cool things that you can do with breakpoints in VS Code is you can add, uh, you can edit the breakpoint and you can say only break when this dot username equals empty string. So if I uh, save this and I want to uh, restart this debugging session. So I've got my session restarted, and if I log in here, and I try to log in with James for the username, this shouldn't break, but if I remove James and I hit an empty uh, input, we should hit this breakpoint over here. Uh, so this is probably a pretty common scenario. A lot of times you'll have uh, some reason that you need to check the properties on a component, for example, in Angular, and you wanna check them on a given function call or when some event gets triggered, you wanna maybe pause and look inside of your component to see what properties it actually has. And this is a great way to be able to inspect those things, to be able to take a look, and it's more insightful than doing just console log statements of your properties. Uh, that, that works up to a certain extent, but learning really how to take advantage of these debug tools in Visual Studio Code, I think streamlines your ability to find things when they're going wrong, to inspect your data and all that sort of stuff. Now there is, uh, you can do this stuff directly in Chrome, uh, I prefer to just spend my time in Visual Studio Code as much as possible, so that's what I do. Uh, one last thing to mention that you'll need to do this is the debugger for Chrome extension. So I should have said that at the beginning, but you're gonna have to install this extension if you wanna debug with Visual Studio Code, so just make sure that you do that. So that's all I wanted to show you guys. For reference, if you, uh, let's close this one. If I come back over to my other tab, and look at uh, VS Code recipes on GitHub, so Microsoft slash VS Code dash recipes. Uh, they've got a recipe on here for debugging Angular CLI projects, and it basically walks you through exactly what we just did. So it should be pretty straightforward if you follow this video. But uh, that'll do it. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you have any uh, comments, suggestions, ideas, things that you're doing that are cool and just wanna share or talk, please re reach out. You can find me on Twitter or really anything social media at James Q Quick. And I look forward to hearing from you guys. And thanks again for checking out the video. I hope you guys are ready to go debug some Angular CLI applications in Visual Studio Code.